Hello everybody, welcome back to Cinema Savvy. It is myself, George, bringing you a very special review. A brand new home media review. It has been quite a while since I've done one of these. And of course, this is in celebration, in anticipation for the home media for release for the highest grossing film of the year. One of the highest grossing films in history. Of course, this is Barbie. Written and directed by Greta Gerwig. Also written by Noah Baumbach. And of course, it's out in the United Kingdom this Monday, the 23rd of October. Where you can pick it up on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, you name it. We're going to be doing a giveaway at the end as well, so please do keep your eyes peeled for that. But I'm here to give my thoughts on the home media release. That is both the picture, the audio track, alongside some of the special features that are behind the scenes that do come with the 4K. So I'm going to be talking about those. I have watched this again this morning, the first time I've seen it since the cinema. So I'll be giving a little bit of my thoughts on the film the last couple of months as well. I was very late to watching it to begin with. I know we had to review it before it came out, thanks to Charlie and Reese. I saw it in mid-August time. I absolutely loved it. As I said, I was a little bit late to the party. Barbenheim was, of course, the, the event of the summer, proven both at the box office, and I think it's going to also get its due come March next year when we're talking awards season. So I've been looking forward to picking this up. And it's really interesting because I haven't been buying as many films recently. I know there's a home media series uh, starting up, Sash Mental have started. That's going to start properly in January again now. So we've been doing loads of change on the channel. You can tell by this new intro. We've got a lot of things happening. And I wanted to get back onto doing these. And it's this time of year where a lot of the big summer films are coming out in 4K and Blu-ray. We've got Mission Impossible out on November the 6th. Oppenheimer out on November the 20th, 20th I think, here in the UK. Or 27th. Apologies, we've got different dates to the US. So we're going to be trying to do a couple more of these videos. And... Uh, I wanted to pick this up. I've been very lucky that Warner Brothers has sent me a copy to review early. I would have had this pre-ordered anyway, just for those kind of people that like to point out stuff like that. Um, and as I said, there's going to be a giveaway at the end of this video too. But um, if I give my thoughts on the film very briefly, I watched it again this morning, as I said. I absolutely love it still. It still resonates pretty hard. Uh, obviously, I, I can't give you the female perspective, but certainly for some of the stuff in there that I can at least align myself with the people I know that are close to me who I might have watched it with, or my relatives who watch the film uh, a couple of times, one of them I can say, the impact of this film is is unquestionable, uh, what people spoke about, what their experience are with it, and I think that's a really exciting thing for me, watching it for the first time back in August, and I don't want to do that, oh, how does it hold up type scenario, because it's still very, very new, but I still had a, a lot of laughter watching this, uh, as I said, some bits hit harder, and I just think it's it's an outrageously excellent film. A Barbie film had no right being this good, and it, and it was, and it's crushed it, and you cannot praise Greta Gerwig more enough for this. I do hope there is a Best Director's nomination uh, for her at the Oscars. And, you know, we've still got Ryan Gosling, we've got Margot Robbie. The, this could have a lot of nominations, and I'm going to talk about a couple of those because we've got some behind-the-scenes on this. And I want to talk about the behind-the-scenes first, actually, because I'll talk about the, the visuals and the audio track at the end. But there are, to, there are only six, which is slightly disappointing because one of the things that gravitated me with this film, one of the reasons why I've sort of loved it from the get-go is, is the essentiality of the filmmaking behind it. Uh, I mentioned a Barbie film has no right of being this good. When Greta Gerwig was announced, that sort of changed things for this film. I'm not going to talk about the person that was linked to it before. We all know who that was. We all know how terrible that would have been. Thank God that didn't happen. Um, and after watching it, I just wanted to know how did they do it. I wanted to see the behind the scenes. I wanted to see the costume design. There are pros. Now, obviously, I've never had a Barbie figure. But growing up, as you can tell behind me, it was all Star Wars. It still is, I guess. And I had a couple of sisters that I don't think they're into it as much, but they had certainly had things like that. So for me, at least, I was curious about how do they take this iconic character of, of 60 years plus and put it into a film, put it into the modern day audiences. And the film delivered with that, but I wanted to know the behind the scenes. I wanted to know how do they approach it, how do they do it. And I've got six featurettes here. I'm going to read them all out. Um, we've got Welcome to Barbie Land, which is probably one of the best ones on here. It's a feature that is them going through the production design of the houses, of the of the sets, of everything, even having the costume designers, bringing on board the production designers, showing the painters at work, seeing how they were able to sort of transfer the, the Warner Brothers studios into the Barbie and stuff. It's magnificent, and this is what I wanted from behind the scenes. Um, my criticism of behind the scenes is that there's only six featurettes, and there's only three good ones. So I'm going to go through one. Becoming Barbie, another excellent one. That's obviously about Margot Robbie. That's them talking the history of the Barbie figures, how they approached it. They went through some of the ideas, some of the concepts that didn't work for the film, where she might not have changed costume, or they were going to do different things. I absolutely love that we got to see elements of this, because this film is a success. 
But what people don't realise is that you don't get to that stage of, of success without trying other things. And I like how open they are with these features, with the behind the scenes about things that weren't working, things that were, and how everything eventually came together to make it what it is. So that's another great one. We've got playing dress up, which is essentially, again, another one. This one was a weird one. This is more about Weird Barbie and uh, Sugar Daddy Ken, the scene where I'm, I'm assuming everyone that's watching this has seen it. That gives a bit behind the scenes on these more unique Barbie characters that pop up. So that's a nice little feature of a couple of minutes. We've got Musical Make Believe, which is the approach to the musical segments of the film. Obviously, everyone wants I'm Just Ken to be nominated for an Oscar. I do. I want Ryan Gosling to perform it at the ceremony next year. It'd be amazing, it'd be incredible. Um, and if you haven't seen Greta Gerwig's interviews following the film, she spoke about so many influences, not just of that scene, but of the whole film. So it's really interesting to spend a bit of time of how they were devising the choreography for the, some of these musical segments. They spoke about their dance history, their music history, they spoke about Mike Ronson being involved. So that was a really informative, a great featurette. And then we've also got All Star Barbie Party, which is essentially a, a very nice, easy featurette. Here's the insane cast, here's the insane cameos. John Cena playing a merman is still one of my favourite things of the year, purely on the basis that I'm also getting back into wrestling, and now he's back in wrestling and makes his Barbie stuff even funnier. Um, so that's a nice little little feature, one that you, you can probably get on YouTube, I'd imagine. And then we've got the one called It's a World, Weird World. So there are six featurettes. I really enjoy a lot of them. I can't complain about the quality of these featurettes. I guess in my head I'm just in this very uh, easy mindset where Oppenheimer has been out with three hours of behind the scenes. The difference being that's a Christopher Nolan film. Um, but I do wish there was a bit more on this, and I've got to say that. As I said, I really enjoyed the ones we got. I just think there's a wealth of potential they could have done with this. I'd have loved to have seen more in the casting scenario. I'd have loved to have seen like blo a blooper. And I never say that often, but this feels like one of those films where everybody was in on it, that every single person wanted to be in this film. And those that were in the film are delighted, and we get that. But I just wish we got a bit more from those rather than the very typical talk to camera for 20 seconds about your time working on Barbie. But as I said, when these features are great, they're, they're, they're pretty phenomenal. It's what we want to see. I'm not going to predict all the Oscars now, but production design and costume, hair and makeup are the three that people have had cemented before the film came out. Now we've seen those features, I'm very much in the mind that that's probably going to happen. I don't want to assume. Uh, obviously, anything can happen between now and March, as they can do with the Oscars, but it'd be a real shame if, if this sort of stuff isn't isn't showcased, doesn't get the recognition it should because it is so much more than just a film about Barbie. The actual filmmaking aspect, as I said, it's second to none. Uh, and again, everything is thanks to Greta Gerwig with this and Margot Robbie, of course, not just starring in the film, but one of the producers too that helped make this film what it is. So I'm going to sort of move away from the special features now. I'm going to talk about the, the actual film, uh, the actual image, the image quality that you're going to look for. Now, if you've seen the film, I'm not just going to sit and say, oh, it's bright and colourful, it's, it's an understatement. I've spoken about how incredible the production design is, the costumes. I knew this was an instant 4K pickup because to see how immaculate these sets are, to really look at this modern take on... I'm trying to think, they use a term on the behind the scenes for this, but it's like got to be authentic, knowing it's, it's fake. Again, ignore me, I don't know what the term is, but... When you're watching this on a nice 4K set with this nice 4K disc, only then, aside from being in the cinema, I feel you can really take into account how incredible the production design really is, how incredible the costumes is. You're noticing all these little things. The picture image, of course, is perfect. But to see that enhanced the Ultra HD, it really does kick in with a film like this. And it shows the difference of when we have studios, when we have directors that are putting money into the film it's not just minus cgi it's not just we can do this on a computer and it looks worse whether you could green screen half this one if they wanted to but there's something really special about seeing those sort of old school rotoscoping you've got the uh, two-dimensional backgrounds you know for example they open a fridge to 2d decal and then you've got 3d props in there as well that sort of stuff is so classic within the sense of cinema but it shows you can still do it today if there is a vision if there is a filmmaker and a director that is wanting to do that then you can do it and this is what i've loved with greta Gerwig being involved in this film her mindset from day one has been about the production about the quality of the film it isn't just i'm making a barbie film for the sake of making a barbie film it really demonstrates what she can do with a high budget and she has spoken on record about wanting to do high budget films after of course she's done ladybirds uh, Little Women and she's done other films so she's co-directed of course she's starred in a lot of films as well 
but I want to. See, I can't wait to see more from her. Uh, we're going to get more from her. She's going to have an absolute massive career, and hopefully, this is the film that springboards her in, into getting the keys to do whatever she wants to do. She listed Christopher Nolan as an influence of that kind, and I absolutely want to see it, and she absolutely deserves it from the back of this. So that's a weird segue away from the image quality of the film, but you will not be disappointed by the disc. This is a 4K purchase, absolutely by a million percent. Talking about the audio track, it's got a Dolby Atmos. Uh, I've got a Dolby Atmos setup. Obviously, within the Barbie film, it's not as noticeable as, say, Star Wars or, or say, what Oppenheimer hopefully will be in November. Uh, it's a very different type of, of audio track, but I can't, again, fault the sound. It's, sometimes it's really hard to talk about things like that with films like this, but I do want to say on the dance scenes, uh, obviously, you've got the, the dance party at the start of the film, you've got the, the Ken fight at the end. The audio is superb, and again, it matches that image quality. You've just got to hand it to them. It should be perfect with a film of this budget with a film of this release it should have that tension but it does happen where you do get these butchered releases for films it's really confusing but this absolutely delivers so as i round out this video i'm gonna recommend the 4k if you've got a 4k blu-ray player do do the upgrade to this if you don't have a 4k that's not a problem pick it up on the format you want we've got to support physical media if you've liked this film it's not going to probably end up streaming for a while and you know you're never going to own it if you're streaming it it could change at any point so this is one to pick up. This is one I would be picking up here regardless. I might still get the Steelbook because the Steelbook's really cool. I like it. I think it looked better on the shelf. And also, a massive shout out to the, the design. We know it's all pink, but even on the 4K Ultra HD logo, they've managed to put a pink tint on there rather than white. So I love little nuances like that, although it still does have the bonkers Warner Brothers 100 logo, which is going to age some of these cases horribly. But um, that's going to do it for this video. As I said, I'm recommending the film. I'm recommending you picking this up. Monday the 23rd of October, I believe it might already be out in America, so if there are any, any Americans, do check the shops if they've already got them. And I mentioned a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a copy of the film on Blu-ray on our Instagram and on our Twitter from this Monday. We're going to be running a competition. Uh, it is UK entry only, we have been told, but there are two copies to give away, so we'll be doing the tweet and the post in the morning. All you need to do is follow our page retweet the posts and like it and you will be entered in for instagram you'll only need to like the post and follow us so uh, we'll be able to give some ways so hopefully that can help you all out if you are looking to looking to pick this up for your collection and i said it will be the blu-ray copy so not dvd or 4k but um that's going to do it for this review it's nice to do home media again there's gonna as i said there's a few of releases coming up i want to talk about maybe there'll be a video at the end of the year we'll look back at some of the favorite fil films i picked up this year on blu-ray but obviously the series is going to properly kick start next year i know there's an episode zero but that's going to kick start properly in january so uh that's going to do this video once again thank you all for watching for supporting us new subscribers we do do home media stuff we do the new releases we've got a big deep dive into killers the flying moon going live tomorrow on the channel you got the David Fincher retrospective. There's so much stuff happening, so do stick around, do support us. Thank you to everybody that has, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.